Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time, we're going to talk about how to tweak the pie hole setup. That if you've been, been if you set this up, or you did because of my last video, this or one of my last videos, excuse me, the, the, go, through, go through some steps here here on different things that that you can try. So we're, let's switch over. Well, before I do that. Thank you for everybody who's been watching the channel, making some changes here in the studio to uh, improve the quality of things a little bit. Thank you for everybody who's been watching the videos. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to do what I can. I'm always talking with different vendors to see about getting their products in where they are a, a good fit for this channel and where I think I can help you see some different ways of using things. Now, having said that, let's shift on over here. And what we're going to do at this point is kind of walk through some of the the different settings. Now, at this point, and I got to close some of the things that you're you're not seeing on on your screen. So, this is the screen you'll, you should see after you're up and running. And I, mine's been up and this particular implementation's been up and running for about a week. Now, one of the side benefits of this is I found a chatty Cathy on my network. I had a device that was really hammering for DNS looks up and lookups. And I'm going to have to look at this and or reach out to the vendor because it's going about every minute or two, which I thought was a little bit much. And so you just saw it increment while we've been talking. Now, this is just kind of your, your, your top list of ones that have gotten through. And then here's ones that haven't. So it gives you a pretty good idea by uh, host and then by domain who's kind of watching to see what's going on. And I found it wasn't too hard to figure it out because if you look at this one right here, it ended up being this little gem right here because the the frequency and the request was just too close to being similar. And this also shows you ones conversely that are making a lot of requests that are denied. And that's also a good indication to of things to look at. Now that's just kind of a static screen of what's going on, but let's go in to settings and that's not where we wanted to go. Uh, let's go down to tools. That's where I wanted to go. We'll end up in settings eventually. Now, if for those of you who are not familiar with Linux, tail command allows you to continually reread a designated file. And as new changes come through, it's automatically displayed. So you don't have to keep closing it and re-adding it. So let's go to the pihole.log file. Now, when it first comes up, this is what you'll see. Now, we'll give it just a minute. And my uh, Chatty Cathy weather station is the one you're going to see doing this. And it's the, it's generating a lot more requests than I would have expected. It, it's very brief, but it does it. And then it, you know, it's looking to where to see if it's got that. And then it's forwarding it out to the designated DNS server. Now, this is the beauty. When you set it up, it, it will fall, at least when I set this up, and there's now been an upgrade, so I'm not quite sure how the new version works. It defaulted to uh, Google. She had the option. And I just said, okay, let's let's get it, go to Google. Now, if we go to settings and then DNS, this is where it's made very easy for you to make changes. Now, what I did was go to Cloudflare. Well, and if the name doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry. I missed it, that one too. I was thinking of it as 1.1.1.1. So I went over here to custom DNS and put in 1.1.1.1. Okay, that was fine. I noticed the logging was showing up a little bit different. So what I did is I went down to Cloudflare. Once I went to the main Cloudflare site and, and saw that the, I'm sorry, the once I went to the main 1.1.1 page and saw that it was actually Cloudflare. So I went, oh, that makes sense. Now, enabling it here gets you that as a DNS resolver, but there is actually, and I've got it in the show notes, if you use the 1.1.1 as your DNS resolver and are using their app on your smartphone, it actually builds a VPN tunnel. Now, it does have the ability to do DNS over HTTPS. And if that just went right past you, don't worry about it. 
this is fine for now. Get used to pie hole. Get, you know, get your hands wrapped around it because you're going to always add that feature later. And I've got the, the how to link to do it. And if you would like me to do a video on it, be more than happy to, because it's going to be, you'll get a little bit under the hood in Linux, nothing bad, but you may end up getting there at some point anyway. So anyway, you can specify different. This is, they don't really tell you, this is primary and secondary. So you can sit there and you could have quad nine as backup. You could use Cloudflare as primary. And I switched to Cloudflare and I did notice even without doing the DNS over HTTPS or VPN tunnel that it did. I noticed a, a, a speed in, in DNS resolution. So that is well worth the process. And remember for this to be effective, you've got to go to your internet router, access point, whatever name you call it, and you're going to have to set this as your DNS resolver. And I would set a backup one like 8.8.8 or something like that. So in case Pi-hole is offline, you've got an automatic backup and you're not just going to go dead in the water and spend some time figuring out why. So, and it's also, your all your devices won't switch right away. So depending on the lease time, some Internet routers will have it as 24 hours. Some have it as an hour. Some may have it seven days. It will take time before the devices all start swap switching or over to doing this. Or you can go on and reboot everything, which should force it to go through the DHCP process again and get the new address. So anyway, that's, that's the story behind that one. So that is really very straightforward. I found that the dashboard has been very informative because I can tell when I'm, I'm using the computer and when I'm not, I mean, it's basically, there was a period of time. Well, I, obviously that's when I was asleep for the night. So it was just normal background chatter at that point, but it helps you see a baseline of what is your, your low time. And then what is the most activity. And it's just interesting. There's still going to be all sorts of things that you'll be learning at some point in time. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to go into command line on, and I'm trying to switch to there. We're going to switch into something, uh, called, uh, well, it's Royal TSX. It's a terminal emulator and it's, you, you can, there, you can get it as freeware. There are some limitations. You can use terminal if you're on a Mac. There's secure CRT. There's a whole host of things. And there's, and there's even another one I use. And I'm, I'm sorry to say I've forgotten the name. Anyway, we've already got a session up. So there's several commands that you want to remember. Now for updating your pie hole, this is something that still has to be done on command line at this point in time. Hopefully it'll change. So I'm already logged in to mine. So we'll do pie hole dash up. And I did this earlier and I wish I could have had the video running then because you would have gotten to see the actual update. Don't worry about that resolute, that unable to resolve host that just says it doesn't know the name, which really doesn't matter to me. Now in doing this command, if there is an update, you will see for one or more of these options update available. And right now this is up to date. Now, if it does have an update available with this command, you will immediately be taken into the updating process. It will bring everything down, install it in your pie hole. And well, at least in the update that I just got through today, nothing had to be, uh, it didn't have to reboot the Raspberry Pi. Now we've already talked about setting an alternate DNS server. Now, if you will notice, and I'm, I'm going to switch back and forth here. So, uh, bear with me on the Raspberry, not on the Raspberry Pi. And I am doing this on the Raspberry Pi. And we'll, we'll talk more about that in a moment. You will notice that there is, this is the name of the host right here. Now there's the name of the product and I've called it my pie hole by default. It will just say pie hole when you bring it up. Now, if you want to name it something different, just in case you're maybe running multiple Raspberry Pi servers, let's, let's go through on how to do that. And really it's very straightforward. So go back over to our terminal session. And then what we'll do and bear with me as I'm looking off camera momentarily, cause I've got this all written down. So we'll do sudo, which this is a command. 
Uh, you may see uh, SU, which is super user, or in sudo is uh, at least the one for the Raspberry Pi Linux distribution. And we've got to temporarily raise our security level in order because we're going to be editing a system file. Nano, which if you're used to editing files, Nano is one of the, it's probably the most bare bones or one of the more bare bones text editing program. There's VI. Nano is very It'd be an easy transition if you're using, if you're used to using the old edit program in DOS. And we'll do forward slash etc forward slash hostname. And if I can spell hostname right, we'll get into this. Now, it brings up the screen at this point and it's got, what do you expect? The name of the server. So first what to do is you'll type I and that puts it into, in, well, actually you don't have to type I. Old habits die hard. I'm used to doing VI. So you will just erase what's here and then you can just put pihole server. And then we will do control X and Y for yes. Enter. That's it. So that's got the change done. Now, if you go back to the screen, I'm sorry, I'm doing this from the wrong area here. Bear with me. Uh, if I go back to Chrome and we do a refresh, but Hey, the server name didn't change. Well, there's a little more to, to that than, uh, than you might think. And if you're not used to Linux, I can understand where, where some of the confusion would be. So what you'll need to do is do a pseudo space reboot. Now I've got all this written out in, in the show notes. So pseudo space reboot, give it about a minute or two to come up and then you can SSH back into the Raspberry Pi or whatever you're running your Pi hole server on. Do a Pi hole dash status and let's go ahead and, and show you that command. And let me get back over here. So it is Pi hole status. And what you want to look for is that the DNS server is running and that Pi hole status is enabled. So that's, that's the main thing to, to watch there. Now logging, if you're doing this on a Raspberry Pi, logging is something that you may want to think about because, and I, this is something that I hadn't thought about until I did a lot of reading on it. Their SD cards are not meant to have a lot of reading and writing done to them, at least on the order of what you see Pi hole doing. If you are doing this on a Raspberry Pi, I'm sure you're doing it on a regular PC, you're running Linux on it, something like that, or under, or under uh, something like uh, VMware Player or VirtualBox, you don't have to worry about that. With Raspberry Pi, there's an extra step. I'm going to be going through this one, but this is what I have found so far. Basically, it's a program called log to ram L-O-G-2 RAM, and that w will manipulate the process of writing the text file. So it's no longer writing to SD card. So it writes them to system memory. Now that will help the livelihood of your SD card because SD cards will prematurely, well, you're, you're going to wear them out prematurely because of all that log writing. And that's something that I'm going to make the change here in the next few days. I was wanting to run stock for several weeks just to get a feel for it. Now the flip side to that, if you're, since you're going to memory to log it, is if you ever reboot your pie hole, you've lost your logs. But I think there's worse problems to happen if things start rebooting. So anyway, that's really very kind of the straightforward on it. I have been very pleased with, with pie hole. I've got dual networks running where I've got one that pie holes on and one that it's not. And it's very worthwhile uh, looking at this. And it's, uh, I I've, been pleasantly surprised. It's an open source product. You do have the ability of giving uh, the folks who are maintaining Pi Hole uh, a little bit of money. So and it's certainly one of the more worthwhile uh, projects that I've seen out there. One that definitely has a lot to uh, to go for it. If you have not gotten a Raspberry Pi, I've got a link in the bottom. It'll take you to a complete ready to go kit. It has heat sinks. It has an SD micro SD card, excuse me, everything you need to get up and running. So that's going to be probably a way to do it. If you, if you don't want to have, if you don't have all the pieces and parts already, I mean, it has power supply, the, the whole deal. If you would like to see how to set up a Raspberry Pi headless and then by headless, I mean, you don't, 
normally to do some of this setup, you'd have to hook up a keyboard, a monitor. Uh, you shouldn't need a mouse with a bed. A mouse usually will be, be helpful in some cases. I'll show you in probably the next video how to set up a Raspberry Pi headless. Now, this is assuming a wired internet connection, a wired ethernet connection. Uh, wireless will be a little bit different, but on things like this, I like having them on a wired connection. So I'll show you how to do that in a future video. Now, to help you along the process, since you are going to be creating a lot of accounts along the way, please go to this URL. That's going to let you download a of uh, now, now a checklist. Yeah, I, I was looking at my own page and didn't couldn't read the right the right. And on how on so you're setting up the different accounts you're going to have. Make sure you've got over your your passwords are different. That you've got answers to the security questions. Please get a hold of that. Save yourself a, a, a little bit of headache to you know, have everything documented because over time, well, to be honest, I've got several thousand accounts and I was uh, I'm going to have to do some paring down because some of them I don't use anymore, which also may help refresh your, your mind. So this is really uh, pie hole is something worthwhile having on your network. And there are here's when this video goes up, you will see other videos in this line to, to go to, please take a look at them. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for subscribing and we'll see you in the next video.